this is not really about what you're all expecting. Um, first of all, I'm not going to start at the beginning. I'm going to start at the end, not the way people read a book. But <clears throat> um, why do we validate was what this was built to be. Um, I'm going to try and stay along those lines, but my talk was something different. Um, but why do we validate? I mean, we all know that. That's not quite what the whole situation is. In actual fact, not only do we validate, we also need advanced validators to validate the work that the validators validated. Now, whatever happens, please don't ask me to try and repeat that. It's not going to come out right. <coughs> okay, um, so let's start. I've got to remember which hand I'm using. <coughs> um, we're going to look at some of the um, things that happened in the past and how validation has progressed through to what it is today because by understanding what is happening is going to help us to understand what is happening. Okay? So, uh, the original um, concept of OpenStreetMap before HOT, before um, Tasking Manager, before validators was uh, anyone can validate work. They just must not validate their own work. And that was the entire concept. It was just a second pair of eyes looking over to see whether they agreed with what had been done. And that was basically it, okay? <clears throat> so we, we, had, we had that, although anyone can validate, do not validate your own work. And that still is in the teachings of today. Um, we don't take it out because it is historical and it is how OSM actually thinks, the same way as they say everyone must be able to map um, and they must be allowed and able to change anything if they think it's wrong. Okay? So, let's look at where we were with the simplified version. Okay? For <coughs> the beginning, we would have... Uh, let's switch it on, that helps. Okay, we'd have disaster activations, uh, medical interventions, and the various um, humanitarian programs. That led to us creating a project, which then got mapped, and after that, some of the mappers did the validation, or the second pair of eyes. Nice, simple, easy, no problem. <coughs> The um, tasking manager was also quite simple. If you clicked on a white square, it allowed you to map. If you clicked onto a yellow square, it gave you the opportunity to review the work. No word validate, did it? Um, review the work. In other words, the second pair of eyes looking over the work. It was plain, it was simple, it was easy. <coughs> um, you could invalidate the work if you wanted to. Um, but in most cases, the mappers just fixed up what they thought was wrong and carried on because it was part of the mapping process. <clears throat> so what did we have then? We had the hot community, which consisted of <clears throat> the organizers, a good pool of mappers, which was continually growing, and those mappers were also your validators or the second pair of eyes. So we had a growing pool of mappers and it re really looked comfortable and good. HOT was in control, HOT had um, everything in hand. <clears throat> right, but came the Nepal earthquake. And <clears throat> HOT was now getting formal. We, we did have the tasking manager and all that sort of thing. <clears throat> but we were all mapping at a terrific pace. Um, the, the Nepal earthquake covered a massive area, and it was quite complex with its mountain regions and paths um, connecting. There were very few roads, so it had to be paths, um, and there were tons and tons of small villages all over the mountainsides. So it was quite complex. But we were doing very well, or so we thought. <coughs> I started looking at the um, overall validation. I was opening up projects that were still open. 
and I found that validated squares were being opened <coughs> and were being worked on. So I went to check. Beginner mappers who weren't quite clear what they were doing. Remember, this was a massive uh, uh, um, area that we were covering. We had lots and lots and lots of, of, of new mappers jumping in to come and help. Um, we were very happy for the help. We didn't realize what was happening. <coughs> they were coming in and opening squares <coughs> that were already green, and they were starting to map, and they were doing funny stuff. Short little sections of road, uh, sporadic buildings here and there. Um, and that was once we'd already validated the square. So now we were at a stage where we could not trust the green squares to be properly validated. This <coughs> led to my um, <coughs> message on the um, OpenStreetMap list, the, the hot list. Ah! We need to change what we are doing and who we are letting in to do it. These activations in response to a disaster mean that people's lives are at stake here. I'm finding totally inexperienced mappers, some with no completed tiles and others with only one or two completed tiles, messing around with validating, tile, validating tiles or unlocking already validated tiles and working on them. I have a screenshot of Nepal showing five validated tiles are actively locked for mapping. When I checked on the people that were doing this, they were complete beginners. My narrative goes on a bit further and saying what the problems are with this, what I'd found, why we can no longer trust the green squares and we need to reevaluate what we're doing. That kicked off a whole conversation on this list which carried on and on, and people were throwing back ideas on what we needed to do. This was the beginning of the validator status and being able to lock people out of mapping tiles or validating tiles. But <coughs> that wasn't what the only thing that came out of this. <coughs> John Whelan jumped in in August 2015, and he wrote <coughs> what he thought and how he visualized um, what he was doing would, in actual fact, be more or less the correct thing to do. Little did John know that in August 2015, his words would be part of the training program today. His words were what we're basing our validation training on today. <clears throat> Here is one chap who had no idea what was going to happen with his suggestion. But it's quite true. What I found to be most successful, successful is not to declare something invalid unless it's really bad. You want the mappers to feel welcome. You want them to map again. Invalid missing a hut doesn't do that. I've had people send me that on one of my tiles, by the way, just map the hut and move on, you know. Generally, I'll sit on one or more projects and validate just those projects as the tiles are done. He's catching the beginners as they're busy mapping. The ob objective is to give feedback within 24 hours or less to the mapper so that we catch their mistakes very early on and get them to correct and understand how to map correctly. That means we don't have 8, 10, 12 tiles down the line <coughs> that are all incorrect and need correcting. Okay, his words go on and on. I've given the um, uh, URL there, but <coughs> his words went on and on, and he laid out exactly. That is the basis of validation teaching today, <coughs> is we need to encourage the mappers, but I'll go on to that a bit further. What do we need in the validation process? What affects validators' work? What affects their workload? Well, no, it doesn't come after the mapper has finished mapping. It starts at the project creation. It goes through the imagery and the alignment, the tasking manager, editors and tools, the training. All of those affect the work, the, the amount of work, and the nature of the work that a validator has to done, do um, at the end of that. <coughs> um, let's start with the validators, right? Um, here's the community. 
that is existing now. Do you notice a difference from the simple version I gave last time? <clears throat> there you've got your hot community, but your core mappers has fallen off. It's no longer growing the way it was. And the validators is a small pool coming off that. The reason for this is the commu hot community and missing maps um, project successes. They have been so successful <coughs> in their idea of rolling out <coughs> to get local communities to take control of their own uh, um, countries, their own areas, to <coughs> do the mapping and, and, and get things going because we all agree, and we even agree now, that local knowledge is far better than satellite imagery. So we wanted and we tried to get local communities to take over from HOT once we had mapped an area for a disaster. And that was so successful. But it kept growing. It didn't stop there. We had individual communities taking um, charge, <coughs> but they weren't the problem. We had other groups which were growing their own communities. <coughs> and they were doing very, very well. They were very successful. Uh, we had Medicine Sans Frontier, which has got its own uh, setup, which it has training its own validators and its own mappers. We have youth mappers. <coughs> they have now have 150 youth mapper groups. And they're all mapping and doing things, some of them on their own university projects, others with community projects, um, and various things like that. But they are all involved in their own community group as youth mappers. Now, some of those, when we have a disaster, will go up and help with a hot disaster, but not all of them. <clears throat> and this is where the problem arises. We were in actual fact, while we were growing hot and missing maps communities all over the place, they weren't actually available to us at HOT itself. They were available to the local communities and they were involved in their own. There is uh, Janet Chapman's crowd to map. They were getting on with mapping for FGM and they were doing a fantastic job covering Tanzania. <coughs> um, but they weren't helping us when we had disasters. That was the problem we have. One of the ways to solve that was to actually go to Janet's crowd and say, hello, we need some help. Can you please try and do project so-and-so and such and such and get that cleared? Can you validate it for us? <clears throat> and they would jump in and help. Um, Ribbon, I got hold of Ribbon and asked if his boot community could help <coughs> with the mapping. They were absolutely great. Um, I gave them two projects and they cleared the validation of those two projects in one weekend. But then what happens? They go back to their own projects and their own work um, <coughs> until they're called on again. Um, now, that's great, um, but I can't keep on just calling those few. So I need to compile a list of all the contacts of the communities out there who have got validators so that I, as a validator coordinator, can say, yoo-hoo, we need some help. This disaster is urgent and it needs to be done. Remember, time saves lives. <clears throat> the first few days of any disaster is critical. After that, after seven days, we're going into just uh, sustaining the communities that have survived. We're not saving lives anymore. We're just making people comfortable and trying to make sure that we don't lose any more. Um, there's a bit of recovery still going on. So <clears throat> we need to get those projects finished quickly. So we have had to, in actual fact, go cap in hand to these various groups and ask them to come in and please help. This is where we're at at the moment. The mappers and validators under HOT <clears throat> are no longer the biggest community. Right, that's a problem we have. What are the qualities we're looking for with the validators? <coughs> Ideally, advanced mapper using JOSM editor has attended a validator training and is experienced in buildings, highways, waterways, and land use. Unfortunately <coughs> for us, the nature of projects has changed. There is a great emphasis on projects that are just buildings. So we have advanced mappers 
who um, have hundreds of thousands of buildings to their name, but they've never drawn a highway or a waterway and know nothing about land use. <clears throat> and that is still the situation today as it has grown because of this way we're setting up our projects. <clears throat> there are very few waterway projects, so we have very few people who are experienced in drawing waterways. Um, so we are, or I am, looking at trying to get a two-tier validator section going, so that one that can validate buildings till they're, they're blue in the face if they want to, and another more advanced set that we can use when um, we're doing more uh, difficult work. One of the things that we've had to do is where <coughs> maps have got um, a lot of local knowledge features added. We try and lock out beginner mappers <coughs> because we don't want them changing any of the local knowledge stuff, which is far more advanced than anything we can get off the satellite imagery. So we don't need beginners messing with that. So we've um, now got the ability to lock them out by making it um, <coughs> uh, advanced mappers only. Um, but even those advanced mappers, some of them have got no idea because they've only ever drawn buildings. So that's the kind of problem we have. Okay, next is the training. Um, most of the training videos that we have online at the moment are out of date. Many of them still show the tasking manager too. Now, yes, that's great because if you, I don't know how many of you might know that. There are over 17 versions of the tasking manager out there. Lots of local communities are using their own tasking manager. <coughs> um, uh, teach OSM and learn. Uh, uh, teach OSM and Hot are on Tasking Manager three, but a lot of the others are still on Tasking Manager two. So while Tasking Manager two videos and the old ID editor videos were okay then, <coughs> the old ID editor is outdated. So much has changed in the ID editor till today that <coughs> we need new training videos. And we don't have enough people in the working groups to be able to do this. Um, project managers, um, Russ at the Activation Working Group has um, been approaching project managers and asking them to go back through past projects to update the instructions because some of them are still trying to press, press the S key in ID to square a building when that has already been changed to Q. So we need to update the trainers so that they are in actual fact working from the same hymn sheet and teaching the, the mappers the correct stuff. Um, so, so much about the training is important to the end product and how much we're going to end up having to validate. We're doing online webinars to try and reach more, map, reach more mappers, we're <coughs> to try and reach those who can't get to mapathons or um, training. So we're running um, both the, the uh, activation working group and the training working group are running webinars to train more people and more validators. Um, another thing that we have a problem with is that the mapathons, originally they were designed to train new mappers. But so many of the mapathons that are happening today are in actual fact using beginners to catch up and get projects mapped. And many of those projects being buildings, they only train those mappers to draw buildings just to clear those projects. So we're getting a whole lot of mappers whose only training is how to draw buildings. Um, this is also because now when they move on and they come across uh, projects that have pre-drawn roads and rivers, uh, we run into problems. The same thing is that we don't give them enough training of how to um, <coughs> realign the imagery because we're too busy trying to get them to draw buildings. Well, the result is that they jump in, they see the imagery, they don't know whether it's Bing, Maxar, or what it is, but they see imagery and they start drawing. Whether it's aligned with roads, whether it's not aligned with roads, they don't understand that or they don't notice it. They just want to draw. And th this is a problem as well. Now, I can understand that. The people that come along to um, the mapathons just want to get in there and start drawing. So the idea is to throw them in, get them drawing as quickly as possible, and then help them when they start running into problems. Um, that way, those who are doing fine, you don't have to worry about. Those that are, need their help, 
should get the help. But in a mapathon, some people are embarrassed to put up a hand so that everybody can see, you, I've got a problem. So <clears throat> plenty of mistakes come through. <clears throat> right, the editors and the tools. The JOSM style building tool. I've been going on and a number of other people have been going on. We need a JOSM style building tool for the ID editor. This is going to massively reduce the workload on validators with all those unsquared buildings or badly tagged buildings. But that hasn't happened yet. <clears throat> and we still need to push harder and to get that JOSM style building tool into the ID editor. I'm not sure why it's being delayed. I believe it's in the process of being created, but a lot of other things are getting in the way in the meantime. <clears throat> We need to instruct JOSM mappers to please use the validation function. Because if they use that validation function, they can clear up a number of, uh, of errors before it even reaches the, uh, the, the, the validators. One thing that has come from our call to um, fix up the ID editor is the addition of the alerts in the ID editor. It's a great step forward but it needs to be included in the teaching as well so that the mappers actually understand and understand how to fix up the errors that are in that. So the training has got to be expanded to include that, which it isn't at this stage. <clears throat> right, the next thing, the tasking manager. All of these things you can hear are creating problems that down the line uh, impacts on what the validator needs to do and increases the workload if it's not proper. Right, <clears throat> let's have a look at what's been happening on the tasking manager. We go back to 2013. There's only 246 projects for the whole year. <clears throat> um, in all 5,940 projects through to 2019, <clears throat> of that, the overall percentage of projects that are validated is 42.59%. I said, whoa, hang on a second. That doesn't truly and honestly reflect what's going on. Because validators can't validate squares that have not been mapped. So I went back again and I worked out how, what percentage of the, 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 the squares that have been mapped has been validated. And that jumps up to 59%. That's the average over all the years, okay? So we're getting at least half of it done. <clears throat> you can see how quickly this jumps up. 246, 363, 558, 934, 1,300, 1,507 projects in 2018. Now, 2018 was a bad year. We had 23 disaster, different individual disasters which had multiple projects to validate. <clears throat> so that was a major year for us. <clears throat> um, now, 1,507 1, projects created in the year. But if you have a look back in 2013 with only 246 projects, we only achieved 27% of the mapped uh, 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 projects um, <clears throat> were validated. But when we got to 2018, with over 1,507, we managed to map, uh, to validate 63% of the 69% that was mapped. So <clears throat> while we might think, oh my God, we're still only 60%, we're not getting it all mapped, the number of projects that we're handling is phenomenal. The increase in projects makes it <clears throat> mind-boggling to think that we have actually increased the amount of projects that are getting, of, of task squares that are getting uh, uh, validated in that time period, even though it doesn't look like we're getting it all done. So, no, I take my hat off to those validators that have managed to keep pace with the increased number of projects. So, what also is happening here, um, on the tasking manager, we have 180,000 <coughs> mappers listed. They're not all mapping at the same time. Uh, that, that would be absolutely brilliant, but they're not, okay? <coughs> um, 
Of those 180,000 uh, uh, mappers, 97% are beginners. Okay? And that is current data. 97% are beginners. But, let, let, let's, let's just um, reassess that because it sounds frightening. Uh, in actual fact, the top 10% of the mappers, the most prolific mappers, uh, um, they account for more than 60% of the mapping done. We have these guys here are doing 300, 400 tiles. <coughs> They are mapping at an a, a absolutely fantastic rate. And they're outpacing all of those beginners who will maybe do one or maybe two. So the percentage of tiles done by that 95, 97% of beginners is small in comparison to the number of tiles that are done by the more advanced ones. <laughs> so that balances out. So it's not as horrendous as it looks. The validators, there's 522 on the task he managed, that 0.2%. <clears throat> compared to the mappers. <clears throat> now do you start to understand how 62% of 1,500 projects is absolutely amazing. <clears throat> of those, 26% are beginners. Now those beginners, we have to go over and check the tiles that they validated. We don't want to scare them off. We want to, uh, them to keep validating and become experienced. But it means that the validators need to validate the validated tiles. Do you get what I said in the beginning? <laughs> okay, um, so this is what we've got. 324 advanced validators. But a number of those only validate buildings. They do not have experience in drawing rivers or land use. Some of them are pretty good with roads, <coughs> but rivers and land use, <coughs> no. Right, so that's where we're at. It's quite frightening to think that we still at this stage are at that. Now, what happens with the project creation, right? We still have the disaster intervention and program creating the project. But a well-planned project with good instructions means better mapping and easier validation. Unfortunately, with poor construction of the project and minimal instructions, of course we start to get varied mapping and complex validation. So it increases the workload. So project managers, there's a program now going to try and up the standard of project managers. Um, part of that is the number of new tools that is appearing on the tasking manager. And tasking manager four, as any of you had attended that, will have heard how those are all designed towards the project manager to help him to, or her, uh, excuse me, <laughs> sorry, um, uh, to help the project managers to do a better job. Okay, we're also looking at um, templates for them to be able to um, give better instructions. And we need to upgrade and improve the videos um, that we can give links to for, for mappers to go back to and, and, and find out what they're doing wrong and how to correct. So those are things that we need. The imagery, um, <coughs> frightening. Um, you're not gonna like this. When you take a photograph from, from the sky, okay, uh, that is in scale, that's a good building but everything on the side of the photograph is offset. You can see the roof is offset to the base. Now that happens with every single one of those photos that is taken on really high quality stuff. Um, first of all, the next photo is over there, so it overlaps slightly to try and get that. On good quality, you have a third photo, so you have one there, one there, one there, but that doesn't help with the edges. So we still have, um, uh, off Nadar buildings, which shows the side and the roof offset from the... Now, when you patch all of those together, you have one big tile. But because of, of uh, also correcting and changing along there, you have now got to stitch that big tile into the tile that's alongside it. And unfortunately, that's where the problems start. <clears throat> There's the stitch line where they've joined the two together. You can see the difference in the size of the river. 
The one set was taken when the river was in flood and really high. The other set, you can see this part is not river, so you've just got a narrow channel there. But on this side, you can see the offset. Now this is, please, this is an extreme one that I've chosen for you so that you can understand that generally the hiccup is about five meters, six meters, sometimes 10 meters. But there are enough cases where I see up to 30, 35 meters um, where the imagery is offset to each other. Um, here you can see how far it is. The buildings are duplicated. There's a building, there's the same building. There's the building, there's the same building. So that gives you some idea of the problems that they get involved with the imagery and how different one set of imagery is to the next. <clears throat> um, we have no way of fixing points in OpenStreetMap so that we can tie the imagery to a fixed point. So we've got these imageries. Each new set of imagery is also corrected differently to um, the last one. So everything is floating around and moving about. Oh, let's use the GPS track, shall we? Oops, no. <clears throat> Sometimes we get a very good GPS track, but other times, well, it's unusable. <clears throat> um, it doesn't help us at all. So GPS, oh, um, by the way, does anyone know that the GPS, the, 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 you can only accept the accuracy as being about five meters? Now, five meters can put a building from this side of the road to the other side of the road, <clears throat> um, which doesn't help. So the imagery doesn't help us at all. Um, <clears throat> what are we trying to do? When we prepare projects for beginners, we should give them areas that do not have any previous mapping. <clears throat> and a single imagery to map so that there's no confusion in their mind as to what they should be aligning to. That's what we can give to beginners and we won't have problems. But what is accurate? Accurate is when you have the buildings, roads, railways, waterways, coastlines, all in alignment with each other. So that the rivers and roads cross each other correctly, the buildings are on the correct side of the road, and the approximate distance from the road. Um, I'm moving quickly now because we need to finish off. The errors, the errors, this is um, the um, ID editor with its errors and warnings. This helps, but it doesn't tell the mapper whether the road is offset or the building is offset. It's only them understanding which is the way to go, is, is, and that can only be done with experience and training. <clears throat> um, there is some things built into um, or, or can be added to JOSM. Um, this is um, validation um, map paint, and it highlights those nodes which are duplicated, it highlights nodes which are connected to things they shouldn't be connected to, it highlights buildings that are not marked as buildings, yes. So all of these visual tools in, in JOSM are very helpful along with the JOSM validator. So those are tools in JOSM, but we have too many ID validators who don't have those tools and are battling. So yay to that um, warning um, that has been built into the ID editor, which has been a long time coming and we've been asking for. Now we've had a lot of stick about uh, hot not being accurate. So what I have done is I've taken the center of Washington, which is a purely OSM uh, project um, by OSMers, okay? I've got 42 errors, 1,200, and 59 warnings. Now we're talking about buildings inside buildings, crossing buildings, crossing highways, um, just the normal mistakes. <clears throat> That's Washington. All right, let, let's pop over to Europe and have a look at Munich. Munich, oh, they've only got six arrows. They're good. <laughs> 1,995 warnings. Uh, these are the people that are complaining that the hot mapping is bad. Okay, please. <clears throat> OSM um, is not to be holding its hand. Remember, when someone points finger at you, there's three fingers pointing straight back. <laughs> okay, right, folks, um, to wrapping it up, these are useful validation tools that we use to look at um, after the validators are validated. They are useful tools for us to look at the, the overall area, as well as going in and um, choosing um, uh, 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 multiple um, squares and validating them. So those are useful tools to have. And last but not least, um, I'm going to move on. 
Those who are interested in becoming project managers and moving up and helping, hot courses is the thing to, to get onto and have a look and understand more about what's going on and how we do things and how we actually handle activations. There's a validator request form at that uh, address. Um, if you take a photograph or quickly copy that down, um, you can request to become validators. We will um, get back to you, assess your level of ex expertise and look at your mapping standard and we'll advise you what you still need to do to become a validator or give you validator status and ask you uh, to please stay in touch so that we can keep an eye on you for a short while and mentor your work. <coughs> so please, we need all the help we can get. As you can see, there are major problems still to be overcome. There are some problems which have already been addressed. There are more problems than, than we have answers for. So please, <clears throat> as much help as we can get. Thank you for listening to my prattle on. <laughs> No questions. Come on, folks, I'm not that good, really. <laughs> Hi, thanks, uh, Ralph, for the good presentation on validation. I'm Dylan, I'm with the Apple uh, mapping team. Um, I'm not sure if the paint style that you showed in JAWSM was the one on our GitHub, but it might be worth checking out if it wasn't. Apple also open sourced a JAWSM paint style for inline validation checks uh, to help editors visually identify issues with buildings or with roads or with um, bad tagging combinations. So that is uh, live and available for everyone to use on our GitHub. And all you need to do is take the URL provided in the instructions and you can load that directly in JAWSM. Anyone can do it. There's no downloading or um, installation required. So. Yeah, there's a, there is a number of uh, variations of the validator um, map paint styles, and you're quite correct, but um, I, I start the validators off on the simpler one um, to get them used to using it and understanding it, um, and then we, we can start moving them on to more advanced stuff. At the present moment, my validator training is for just getting validators up and running and started. Uh, we don't do an advanced validator course as yet, but I would like to start doing an advanced validator at some stage. Yeah, thank you very much for that, yes. Thanks for the presentation. So when I understood it correctly, you, you talked about when you talk about validation, it's all about uh, mapathons. So do you have any advice on how to validate mapping parties when people go out? So how can you make sure that, you know, that they're not, I don't know, um, mapping features of a shop which might be closed at the time and when it's open, they might have different findings? Do you have any advice on that? Um, in, in actual fact, no, there's, there's nothing you can do about that. You, you have to trust the people who are out in the field there that the stuff that they're bringing back is um, usable and uh, valid. Um, the way to, to actually do that is what the motorbike mappers, the WAM uh, West African motorbike mappers were doing in Sierra Leone. And they sent two or three um, different people back to places to redo what someone had already done um, and then checked the, the, the information that came back against uh, the information they already had. So that that way they, they could even out. And if there were any um, discrepancies, um, they would then try to find out which was the valid one or go back to that place again and find out which is more valid. So the way to, to check whether a field worker is bringing you back the correct information is to have someone else also do the same uh, feature and see if they come back with the same thing. So <clears throat> that's, that's a good way of doing it. Um, uh, you, you cannot validate unless you're actually standing at the spot that they're at. So. Yes. Ah. Uh, how often are validators part of the local community versus somebody who's remote, maybe in another continent? Um, it's very common for validators to be part of a local community. Um, the pool of um, remote validators is um, uh, not that large, but they are very definitely some of the most 
um, prolific validators we have. Uh, this, <coughs> last year, I, I did an appraisal to see um, what the mappers were doing, and I found that 20 really deserved a letter of thank you from HOT <coughs> um, for the amount of work that they had done, um, and they account for a bulk of the validation um, as it drops off very quickly after that. <coughs> but it's quite amazing to think that most of the validation is done by 20% of the validators. The others do one, two, three tiles every here and there. And there's a, a small core of validators who do hundreds of validations <coughs> uh, over the course of the year. Uh, actually runs into thousands uh, over the course of the year. Um, I try to pick those out and ask the hot board to send them letters of thank you for the work they've done. Right. Yeah. Next. Right. Okay. That's it. Right. Thank you very much, folks.